In our battle for the better angels of our nature, we come to the heart of the matter. Is God with us, or has Emmanuel changed his name? We are told in Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 and 46, From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lambda sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The fourth word of Jesus from the cross resonates with Psalm 22, where the poet cries out, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why so far from delivering me and from my anguished roaring? My God, I cry by day, you answer not by night and have no respite. But you are the Holy One enthroned, the praise of Israel. In you our fathers trusted, they trusted and you rescued them. To you they cried out and they escaped. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. Jesus' cry about being forsaken by the Father raises some intriguing questions. If, as the faithful Son of God carries out his earthly mission to the point of death, why would he think he was forsaken? If he had been anticipating his death in Jerusalem for some time, why would he doubt when it arrived? The reason? Jesus was fully human. He felt as we feel, alone. There are times when we all feel abandoned, either by friends or circumstances. Jesus is crying out, as we all have, that God will break through the alienation he felt. As people whose lives are frequently defined by feelings of alienation, we come to a moment of complete dependence. There's nothing else we can do. If Jesus did not feel as he did, he would not be the Christ that we need. The writer of Hebrews tells us, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet without sin. Hebrews 4.15 The cry about being forsaken is as moving a moment as we find in the Gospels or in any work of ancient literature. If we were to read the entirety of Psalm 22, we would see a journey from despair to hope. Light and darkness, life from death, rescue from tribulation is the rest of the story. The fourth word is not the last word. It is a story about reversal. It is not about denying the realities of life. It recognizes the inevitability of crisis and affirming the hope of renewal. It is about enduring in the confidence that the truth of Jesus Christ shapes and sustains life on earth. The world is a tragic place that never fully conforms to our wishes. Jesus asks the same questions that we all ask. We wait and watch and wonder. And in those moments between light and darkness, we might find ourselves lonely, but we are never alone. Psalm 23 reminds us that the Lord is our shepherd through our darkest valley. He makes us to lie down in green pastures and he leads us beside the quiet waters. He restores our soul. And he guides us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for he is with us. His rod and his staff, they will comfort us. May you understand that the fourth word is never the last word. And may you live in light of the Easter light that is still coming.